Hi everybody, welcome to Dave's Bonsai. On today's episode, a beautiful fall color walk and a trip to Michigan where we meet Tim Cox of the West Michigan Bonsai Club. We are at La Lake Park in Woodbury, where I live, uh, just uh, within walking distance from my house, which is uh, super nice and convenient. It is the uh, second weekend in October, and blue skies, the leaves are changing, some trees have lost some leaves, some trees are just starting to turn, and we got everything in between. Absolutely stunning. So today I'm out on a walk, but I'm going to bring you back to the summer trip I took out to Michigan. So this past summer, on the road trip with my son Toby, we went east and north. We headed to Michigan first. So in Grand Rapids, Michigan, there's the West Michigan Bonsai Club, and the president of that club is Tim Cox. So you can hear the full interview that I had with Tim on Up North Bonsai. So the podcast that I started, episode five, is Tim Cox, and that's available right now at Acast, or you can check it out on my website at bonsaiacres.com. So check out the full podcast for the whole uh, stories that we talked about. This is a little bit condensed version, part one. And you know what, let's jump right in. How did Tim get started? What was it about Bonsai that got him all excited? Well, let's let him do the talking. So here's Tim Cox from Grand Rapids, Michigan. I'm very curious to know where all this started from. How did Bonsai get going for you? Well, I was always a gardener. Okay. And in, uh, when, in my 30s, I fell and broke a kneecap, which means you don't get on your knees very easily thereafter. And so I bounced around and, you know, young married with kids. I went to a, um, a we took our daughter who lives in Chicago, she was back visiting, to uh, Butterflies Are Blooming at Frederick Meyer Gardens and Sculpture Park. And down the hall, there was a bonsai show. And I'd always been a little kind of tangentially interested we walked down and talked. There was a vendor there from Chicago, and so my wife and he were talking about Chicago, mm -hmm. and she, she said something to the effect of, gee, I wish you were in Grand Rapids. I'd like to buy my dad some, some uh, bonsai lessons for Father's Day. And uh, he said, well, you know, my student who's standing right here is going to start teaching some classes in a couple weeks, and she hooked me up, and it's been a fun ride ever since. I took a workshop at West Michigan Bonsai Club with Andy Smith, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, having lived in South Dakota uh, in the 70s, I started talking to Andy as a South Dakota native. I wasn't really native, I was there three years. Yeah. And uh, um, you know, I said sort of boldly, hey Andy, I hear sometimes you'll, uh, you'll host somebody on a gathering trip. And he was evasive, as I think he should be. I mean, there's a million people that want to go out there and gather with him. Absolutely. So we corresponded over about a six-month period, and he finally invited me to come out. He said something to the effect of, you know, you, I had to determine that your attitude and your heart is right. Yeah. And that's Andy, man, and I love him for it. So my son and I, the next spring, um, we went to the, the Meyer Garden Spring Show, Mother's Day weekend, and the next week we took off for South Dakota. So Andy makes you uh, get permits. You know, I got there, we called him, we hadn't seen him yet. He said, you need to go to the, the ranger station. And uh, so we did, and I, I walked in, told him what I wanted, and they said, well, how many do you want? I said, how many? How many? To, t tell me what the deal is. <laughs> $5 a permit, and you can get 10 in a year. Okay. So there's my son, 10, me, 10. We had 20 gathering permits. Wow. I think Andy was a little stunned. <laughs> and, <laughs> and, and I had worked out a price with him that, you know, I said to him, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm struggling with this, but you, I really want, I don't want you to do this for free or even at a huge discount. Well, right. I think he did it at a pretty good discount, but he said he would gather for himself too. Okay. And this tree is yeah. one of the ones we got. And he said early on, he said, I, you know, I, I think I know where this, this tree I want you guys to have. If it's if I can find it again, I, I'm pretty sure, you know, we'll look for it. And yeah. at the end of the first day, we gathered this tree, and uh, by then we were we were buds. And he taught us to how to how to prepare the roots and and wrap them in burlap yeah. and tie them tight. Yeah. And you know these trees aren't very heavy, 
when there's no soil on them mm -hmm. or no pot with mm -hmm. them. Yeah. So, you know, we strap them to a backpack. Yeah. And uh, the one thing he did say was, we're gathering legally without any problems at all. Yeah. But if we run into the wrong people who see us carrying trees on our backpack yeah. and they complain, you know, the Forest Service is, is really attuned to that as well. Sure. So as we went out this trail, we'd gather one and we'd hide it. And we gather another and we hide it. And we gather them up on the way back. Yeah. And uh, everything worked out just fine. Well, I got needle cast for a couple years and I had to really work to get rid of it. You really need to let the needles evolve and drop because you, you get rid of the disease, but you don't really heal the needles. Okay. You know, they've got to, that they've got to do what they're going to do and, and drop. So okay. last year the tree was in really good shape. I entered it into the, uh, to the show in Chicago. Um, my wife and I were staying at a, at a motel. I went to pick her up the next morning and came back and there was a funny sense. A lot of people there know me. Andy was there and people were just being odd and we walked around the corner and here it is in the Tokonama with the best of show on it. Really? It was, a, it was, a, I'm not a big emotional guy, but it, it oh, just, bet. it just killed me. Yeah. I loved it. This was last year? Last year. Fantastic. Congrats on that. And then in the professional category, this gentleman named Andy Smith won the professional category. So our trees were displayed in a tokenama with side by side, professional and, and open. What a fun full circle moment there. Well, it gets even better. So he tells me that two weeks after we were there gathering, he went back to the same area and gathered this other tree. Same area of the Black Hills. And he said, yeah, they're probably cousins. <laughs> they are related. <laughs> they're related. And you were, uh, that is fantastic. By the way, I want to say the pot yeah. uh, is a Ron Lang pot. Ron Lang's a potter who was, uh, he and his wife both were um, professors in the ceramics department at Penn State U, and he made, he's well known, uh, but he retired last year. Okay. So I like it even better. Yeah. But he and I designed the thing on the phone. Really? He was a wizard. We talked about things like, first of all, size. Right. And once you get the size figured out, then, you know, the shape of this side. Sure. Do, do, do we want it straight? Do we want it curved? Do we want it bowed out? Do right. we want it bowed in? Yeah. What do we do with it, with this? What do we do with this? Yeah. What do we do with this? Look at that. How about this line down here? And all of those things just fell into, into place. And then we talked about what are we going to do in terms of color? And traditionally, you know, uh, these ha uh, evergreens have or conifers have unglazed unglazed pots and uh he said well i won't make it real shiny but i don't i don't think if you like i didn't like his the color of his clay body okay and he said if you know if you want we can we can put some color on that and very little glaze very little bright finish right and i did and i've, I've had some people who were like Ugh. but I also had the, the uh, guest master at Chicago last year go, that is a fabulous combination. Yeah. So, and I've always felt like it's a fabulous combination. You, you have to have a little bit of thick skin in bonsai because you're you do. 15 different opinions. You do. 15 people looking at the tree and pot, right? You do. It's beautiful. This by far is one of my favorite part of the walk at La Lake Park because of all the poplar trees. We got the white bark, uh, some black specks in that bark. We got the yellowing leaves and then the contrast with some of the green still left and the light coming through. It's always one of my favorite parts. And for some reason in this section, when you walk through far, uh, farther through it, there's a whole section where all the trees seem to lean one way. So I don't know if the winds keep uh, pushing them that way over the course of their time or if it was a storm way back, but um, super pretty area. So up next with Tim Cox, when I do an interview for Up North Bonsai, I always talk about people's microclimate because I think it matters. Whether you're in this neighborhood or just down the block or hundreds of miles away, we have to figure out how our bonsai are gonna to react to our microclimate. So I asked him about his microclimate. We talked a little bit about soil and then we get into the first of the two seasons of the year. So we talk about summer solstice and then we talk about the fall equinox. Let's go back to Tim. What happens here in your yard in Michigan? Well, I grow in the sun. I don't have any shade to speak of. I have a little bit along this fence over here, but it's it's very little. Yeah. And I'm planning to put some shade in. Mm -hmm. And I've been a little careful not to get those things that are uh, not able to grow in full sun. So I get strong sun. 
I took out a couple trees when I bought the house. Mm -hmm. I put up a fence. Mm -hmm. I made sure it's it's sunny. Now on a day like today, it's hot and humid. We have a fair amount of humidity in Michigan, mm -hmm. so so I see that as a challenge. Mm -hmm. This year I had to fight fungus just hard, mm -hmm. but I won. <laughs> <You> know, <laughs> thanks to modern chemicals. Yeah. Um, so I and I water daily, religiously. I um, if it's 90 or above, I water twice a day, and uh, I use a really porous soil, as you can see on this mm -hmm. one. We, we repotted this this year. Mm -hmm. um, so I've got this real uh, free draining soil, and so I can really pour the water on, yeah. and it, I believe it pulls oxygen in the roots, yeah. and that's really good for them. Yeah. I noticed with a lot of your, your pots and your trees, regardless of size, you have a, a smaller size soil is, is, is yes. than what I'm used to seeing. Yes. Tell me more about the size. I mean, we're jumping to soil here, which is a huge jump in the well topic. But you're using smaller, and tell me about your soil mixture here. So I'm not I'm not here to to, to promote my soil because you know what that uh, we'll get we'll get people today we'll arguing. We'll be in trouble. Yeah, but I use what I have. Yeah. I I learned from somebody who uh, I don't use akadama. Mm -hmm. I don't. I use some pumice. Mm -hmm. uh, but my basic soil mix is. Uh, a whole lot of turfus that's sifted. I would take all the fines out. Mm -hmm. um, I have two two sizes, but I use what I have. Yeah. The, the finer stuff. That's probably I didn't have any big stuff on hand and I needed it. <laughs> I, I'm not a I, I'm not fussy about soil, and yeah. you have to learn to use soil. And once you do, Walter Paul said you need to understand your substrate and go with it. Sure. So I think that. If you know how your substrate is draining and, and right. uh, retaining water or what oxygen right. is going in there, you're going to be fine just so you know what you're doing with that soil. So I use I use turfus. I use a little bit of uh, crushed granite. Sure. It's, it's chicken grit. Yep. Easily obtainable. Yeah. And then some, um, on most of the conifers, I use a little bit of organic stuff. And this is, this is um, Australia or New Zealand orchid bark. Orchid it's, bark? Okay. It's orchiata, the smallest you can get. Okay. And it's already it's already sifted. Yeah. And it's perfect stuff. <laughs> but it's smarter, expensive. Not harder. But it's expensive. <laughs> You're paying for it. Yeah. So you know, and I <laughs> yeah. don't use equal parts of those. I use primarily turfus. So you can get hot here in Michigan. You get humid here. You've been dealing with fungus this year. So is summer then just all about the water game for you here? I think or so. The, the other thing is, I fertilize my trees like you wouldn't believe. Yeah. You know, every week something goes on them. I because you know my water flushes it out. Yeah, it does. So I just pour it on. Yeah. Mostly organic, but yeah. you know. Organic I, granules, are you using pellets, are you watering? No, I, I, use, I use fish oil emulsion, yeah, yeah. a couple different parts of fish oil emulsion, but this summer I use granular osmocote. Okay. And you know, you've got to be a you got to be a little bit aware of the of the weather mm -hmm. if you're using some of those granular things because they could burn a bit. Sure. But sure. if if you th if you're afraid of it, water the heck out of them and then you, it's not a problem. Yeah, yeah. Watering is when we when we do workshops through MBS, the 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 questions and the challenge with watering is just always the top of the list and how are yeah. these guys and gals going to keep these trees alive? Well, I find year. like online if you read any of the forums, people get nuts about about soil. Yeah. And it's the most important thing, but it's also the easiest. You just kind of figure it figure out right what you need to do this yeah. this should have been watered this morning already but we'll do it in a bit we'll, we'll get in a bit that's right yeah i wouldn't let it go into the afternoon because yeah. of the heat but so watering once a day for sure on the hot days you're doing twice a day so then what now you're doing work here on this pine literally there's shavings below me you've been yeah we on did this pine. what do you do in the summer for work on your trees not much yeah try to do most i i repotted two-thirds of my bonsai this year mm -hmm. just because i had been lazy and let it let it slide and um, um, it shows you. I mean, they're just root bound as heck, pot bound as heck. Sure. And uh, so that's a spring activity. I start with larches, and you in Minnesota understand that. Around here, the common knowledge is you do your larches when there's still snow on the ground, <laughs> and it's true. If yeah. you if you if you pot them much later, you're in danger. Yeah. So, if you do summer work. What are you limiting yourself to? Act? I mean, if you are you doing it just because you have to, because you're falling nope. behind, or what do you what what I, can you do safely in the summer? I did this yesterday because one of my mentors was here, yeah, and he and I have 
because of the the Jack Michael Bonsai legacy stuff this spring, it's been really hard for me to connect with people I work with. Sure. And I I, I do some work on my own, but I love it when I've got somebody there. And I said, yeah, I want you to come over and help me take this branch off. I've been thinking about it for a long time. Yeah. And he hands me the, he hands me the tools and says, Go for you're going to take it off. Yeah. But let's talk about it. And you're under a tent. It's sitting here. Are you going to keep it in the shade for a while because you worked nah. on it or put it right back nah. out there? No, nah, this, is, this is a pretty robust tree. Yeah. I, don't, I don't have to put this one in for winter storage. You know, ponderosas yeah. can take it. Ponderosas can. But do I do. But do I do. You? By the way, my, my wife says we should. Yes. My wife says we should. <laughs> and there you go. So limited work in the summer, keeping it watered and take care of. And you fertilize all the time, it sounds like. Yeah, year usually, round. usually once a week. Uh, when I go into winter storage, I'm pretty much done with yeah. fertilization. For, and by the way, I built a, I built a porch for my winter, my winter storage. Winter storage is in there. Yeah. yeah. The, right. the electrician on this project, I had, a, I had a porch and I used it, but it was just an awful thing, add-on. Yeah. When we bought the house, we knew we were going to have to replace it. So uh, we took it completely off and built something that looked like the rest of the house. And uh, the electrician on the project was kind of fascinated by the bonsai. And he goes, you built this room just for these trees? <laughs> Darn and, right. I did. And, I, and I've never said yes, but that's, of course, <laughs> the answer. Absolutely. We talked about fungus before because of humidity. Any pests you're dealing with in Michigan? I pretty much, I'm, I'm routine in, in pest um, treatment. I use, uh, I can't, sub Subdue, I think Subdue Max. Okay. And, I, and there, it's a soak. And a tree like this, I, I pour water onto it, but yeah. many of them I put it in a big tub yeah. and soak them put, them, put them out. And it's been very uh, successful. Sure. It's an expensive thing, but my gosh, if you buy a bottle, and you got 40 trees, you probably will use it the rest of your life. Really? Okay. You know, yeah. it's, it's a quart and it takes 20 drops per gallon. Okay. You know. It's going to be there for a while. It's going to be there for a while. Awesome. So you've been able to keep, keep the pests in check? Yeah, I haven't what had... Are, what's the worst you see here in Michigan, or you've seen on your trees? Well, we had tent caterpillars last year on, on an apple tree I've got, and they were all over the bonsai. Really? But they didn't it seem to... I think they... They didn't like them enough? I think they munched a little bit and died, <laughs> you know. The heat of the summer starts to go away, and what, uh, what's your routine in fall here? What do you got to do to your trees? I can, do, I can do a fair amount of styling when, they get, when it gets much cooler and they slow down. Right. And I do sometimes, I like to work through workshops. I go to Chicago sometimes and work with Todd Schlafer or you know, whoever, who, whomever's in the area. Yeah. Spend a day with them, take a favorite tree or two. Yeah and do extensive wiring, pruning, yeah. all of that. Uh, they, seem to, they seem to work real well that way. I can also do that in early spring. Mm -hmm. And you have more conifers than deciduous. And you're well, a conifer guy? Yeah, I didn't, I didn't really, that wasn't a conscious decision, mm -hmm. but um, I'm, I'm seriously gonna add some shade before the summer's over, and then I might get back into some deciduous. Sure. But I've been stung by the, by the, the maple thing you know, I'm tired of trimming maples every three days. <laughs> it's a lot of work. It is. <laughs> yeah, you have more mature, refined trees than I do, so you, you got your work cut out for you. I'm still developing and let them shoot and run out and thicken up trunks and all yeah. that kind of stuff. Yeah. So, yeah, very good. Um, so a lot of wiring and a lot of work in the fall. Um, still fertilizing through fall, right? Just kind of yeah, set that, set that I, motion for spring. I cut my, uh, I cut my nitrogen content of the fertilizer back okay but this this thing is dripping sap yeah as we talk yeah i, I it'll, saw a couple of drips here it'll quit eventually but that <laughs> that's an interesting phenomenon yeah that's what makes me nervous about summer with pine that it's just going to flow like crazy um I, but it's all right there's a couple techniques but yeah he's he's a healthy boy we're okay yeah there you go and that's what as we all say in the beginning, too, work on a healthy tree. So if you got a yep. healthy tree, you're in good shape. Yep. And the recovery is going to be that much better. So that's going to wrap it up for part one of the Tim Cox interview. Now, this is all a part of my Up North Bonesai podcast. You can hear the entire Tim Cox interview from start to finish, about a full hour's worth of information on the Up North podcast. So find that on my website, bonesaiacres.com, or you can check Acast. If you go to acast.com, uh, you'll be able to find Up North Bonesai on that podcast hosting service. It's just as easy to go to my website, and of course, I will put uh, the links 
in the description down below. So that ends part one of the Tim Cox interview. Now I'll leave you with a few of the photos I took on my walk today and then we'll get to part two. Take care of you, take care of your bonsai, and we'll catch you very soon on the next one.